Let me introduce you to my wife, Arwen. And welcome back for more of our Minecraft Surviving Noobsville Let's Play. I still haven't figured out a decent introduction for that. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm having a pretty good day. If at any time you find yourselves enjoying the video today, please don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and show your support. And if you're new to the channel, peeps, don't forget to subscribe as well. Well, guys, I got a little something to show you. And then we're going to get into our our catch up you know let's uh, let's have a look at it tour around the base but first let's roll the footage of the raid And there you have it, guys. That's the second time I've been raided here at the Citadel, and that's the first one I caught on uh, on film. But uh, let's get this underway. So today, guys, uh, on today's episode, we're going to have just a, a base tour, uh, just to check out everything that we've done and accomplished here at the Citadel. So to start it off, uh, one of our latest and last builds that we did was the uh, the, the suspension bridge, uh, which is really super cool. I'm just going to probably pop on over 
uh, to the other bridge that we uh, we did. It was just a, a very standard kind of straight up forward across bridge. Uh, let's run over to it. We'll have a look and that'll give us a better look at the suspension bridge as we go. Calm down. Calm down, meat. Calm down. But yeah, here we go. So this was the first bridge that we built, and it was just uh, just a quick bridge just to get us back and forth over to the jungle area uh, and to help secure the, uh, the passageway here in and around the citadel over to this area. But there's our suspension bridge. Uh, I actually kind of like it. There are some things I would uh, do differently now that I've done it, uh, but those will be for another time. Uh, this was the third tower that we built, kind of a, a squashed mushroomy kind of tower deal. Oh, man, the meat. Um, we have a, a tall sniper standpoint tower with a beacon on top of it, and this is just a small storage tower that we never actually did anything with. Uh, some cabs, some compact animal breeders peeps that we made. The meat is so loud, guys. We get some chickens, some pigs, cows, and black sheepses uh, so that we can get all of the wool that we need from these guys right here. And all we do is we breed them up and they give us all the resources provided by such a thing. Um, I was finding that I was running out of steak relatively quickly so i think uh what i would do is i would actually probably increase the number of cow cabs that are there to help accommodate for the flow of food that is required so in the intermediary time with the loudness of the meat here is all of the cows peeps i just breed them up and breed them up and breed them up and that's just how they work a uh, small dripstone farm we put together this is again one of the later builds uh and it's doing pretty good we've got 24 pointed dripstone coming out of it so far it's only been there for a couple of days uh this is the water wall is the first real gate wall thing that we built after the wall itself was built and the wall encompasses the entirety of the citadel uh but yeah it's just a just a quick water wall quick on off little redstone kind of deal we can come in and have a look at it all it is is a switch turns on the signal which extends the pistons and stops the water from falling and likewise, if we shut the switch off, the pistons retract and the water is allowed to fall freely again. Uh, it's, you know, kind of just a, a funny giggle, haha. It was our first attempt at uh, a gate kind of deal and it worked out pretty good. Uh, storage with a couple of boats, nothing too serious. Let's come up over here. We have our llama storage. Uh, we have a massive amount of llamas because we had a massive amount of traders that came along. I thought I needed their leads, so you know what happens to that. Uh, this was our first spawner that we built, interestingly enough, and we turned it into a giant fountain uh, with our fish swimming around in there. And there's a number of fish, and they like to go up to the top and jump down and things like that. Uh, let's take a trip down into where the nether portal is, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. But here's that spawner. Uh, it's a zombie spawner. The zombies spawn. Let's see if we can catch some of it in action. Someday please. Anytime now. You want to spawn some zombies for me, big fella? I would like it if you spawn some zombies. I don't think it's going to do it, peeps. I don't know why. Is it just too bright? Is that the... Uh... Yeah, that was the issue. It was just too bright. So there we get some zombies that spawn. They just come down. They funnel into this area here, which... Uh, there's a bit of a water trap-ish kind of deal here. They get stuck, but whoop, up they go. And then as you'll see, uh, in just a moment, he comes all the way back down and falls. I believe it's 24 blocks down to this area here. He will, there he is. And uh, it, it's not that they're one hit, they're, they're two punch or one swing with a sword, which is very nice. And all of their droppings <laughs> come down here and get collected. Uh, this was a room that I had initially set up for this. Uh, it ended up being too deep, and I mean, we've got we've gotten all kinds of uh, rotten zombie flesh from this guy. Um, this is just a quick smelting, an auto smelter that I had set up. You put whatever you want to have smelted in this area up here. It comes down to the hopper, of course. It gets smelted and put down into this. Uh, you load this full of fuel, like so. The fuel will come down into here, go into here, and it'll just keep funneling and funneling and smelting and smelting. Um, the lever shuts off the things coming out of the hopper so that you can actually pick them up and collect XP from them. But there you go. Uh, do, 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 what else can we do? Let's come up out of this little hole here. This goes down into one of the ravines uh, that we had to light up in order to get things to work at a much better pace. 
we can come down and check out the mud hut, which was our first room. This was our first house right here, guys, was the mud hut. That's what I refer to it as anyway. Uh, nothing in here now, but this used to be enchanting back in here. And we had storage and smelting. And, uh, and this goes down into our mine. This area right here used to be our gardening area before we built this. Uh, which is just an auto harvesting gar uh, garden. Uh, all you do is you click the button. The water gets released. It harvests all of the things. You have to hit the button again to shut the water off. Uh, it brings everything down. All of the drops, all of the seeds, all of the wheat, uh, the cocoa beans. Man, I'll talk to you about that in a second. And Well, you guys should have seen that. Um, but yeah, and then it just drops them into this hopper, which deposits them into this chest. And we replant with seeds, and then all the extra seeds go inside here, which funnel down into a composter, uh, which gives us bone meal. That was one of our first builds. Looks like we're about to get some sacks. Give me your sacks. No sacks? No sacks. Oh, the lag. Okay, the lag is gone. Um, the wall is, is rather spectacular. We'll have a look at it here in a minute. Let's run over here to the uh, to the, the mob spawner, the high altitude mob spawner that we built. This is just a, a two floor mob spawner uh, with a, a drop and collection area underneath. And this was our first uh, water elevator that we set up. It's actually the only water elevator that we have here at the Citadel. And it's about to be the night by the looks of it. But this will give you a better look at the Citadel in total. Uh, there is this wall that goes all the way around the outside of it. And some braziers on top of the towers on three of the corners. So that if anybody that is out in the ocean wishes to come and visit, you will know that it is a friendly place to be by the towers burning at the wall. So this is the dropper. Again, it's the same kind of deal as the other zombie dropper. It's a... It, oh, wow, stronger fella. Uh, it's usually two hits, but apparently three. Uh, you get some XP. The drops come down here. You get all set up. Uh, this was our second enchanting area. I moved the enchanting area from the mud hut up here to this place because it just made more sense. This is where we were getting all our XP. This is where all of our uh, enchants could and should be done. We have a number of enchanting books, which I need to move these to the new enchanting area, which we will check out later. Nether storage everywhere, uh, just the way it works. Oh, zomboids are falling down. Let's see if we can get a, a good shot. Let's go over here. Do you think that's going to land us on top of... Let's find out. Here we go, peeps. All right, so didn't quite make it to where I wanted to be. Uh, but this isn't a horrible spot to be either. Let's just come up here. Okay. So this is the top of the uh, the auto-harvesting farm. Nothing serious, just some a redstone wiring on inside here, water running down each side to keep it hydrated. Uh, here we have our automated uh, sugar cane and... Uh, what's this stuff? Bamboo farm? Uh, there's a mine cart that runs around underneath. You should probably be able to hear it. Down in here. So as you can see, there's a mine cart runs around. Just runs over some hoppers here. Deposits things into these chests uh, that we're actually getting pretty full up on. I'm going to have to do, make it uh, clean it up here in a bit. There it goes. It just harvested. Um, this is just something set up so we could get paper. The whole reason I did this was so we could get paper trades and make books so that we could get mending. Mending was very important to me, and it still is very early on. This was the original sugarcane farm that I set up. It was just quick and easy. Just run along, harvest it, pick it up. It continues to grow. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. You have a good day. That kind of deal. And then I planted a pumpkin. And melon alongside it, just so we could uh, we could get some go stuff going. I don't want to miss anything, so let's come up this way. And next to the automated cane and bamboo farm, we have a cactus farm, which I you wanted to utilize cactus for our mine rail system. So here's all our cactus. It's just continually harvesting. It's a very simple design. Uh, as the cactus grows, because there's something next to it, the cactus pops off, lands in the water, goes into the, into the bin, and away it goes. Uh, inside of a tower, and this is uh, this is kind of an interesting little deal. So it, it kind of has a there's a, a ravine that runs underneath here, all this way, and I just kind of covered it up. But I decided this part of the hill should be left open, or this part of the wall should be left open, so that it's kind of I don't know like that. Uh, 
there's a scene in a movie that, uh, oh my God, something of the Titans, and there's a kraken that comes and attacks a city. I believe it's the city of Athens, and they have this kind of deal here where it's um, towers with a walkway above and underneath. And anyway, so yeah, this is what we've got. Sounds like the uh, the zomboids are going kind of crazy underneath here. Yeah, see, they can spawn and fall, but there's no way for them to actually get in to the citadel. Uh, I never got to it, but there's supposed to be staircases inside of these two towers, but going to the bottom, but instead they are inside here, and the staircases, this is the same for all the towers, they just come up to the very top, where you can see that the fires are just netherrack burning, surrounded by iron bar to stop the particles from coming out, and setting the towers on fire and burning them to the ground, because I had that happen, or at least nearly happen once, ladies and gentle peeps, there's an ender person over there, um, hopefully stays over there and doesn't decide to come over here. Uh, we did have a bit of an issue with Ender Girls for a while being sent by by Derp, the agents of Derp, man, or controlled by Penelope, but we got that straightened away with the defeat of the dragon. Up here on top of the wall, um, let's see, so, oh, we didn't go over this. This is, uh, this is the latest machine build that we did. Uh, it's an automated kelp farm that we're using kelp in order to power our smelters and our furnaces. And if you look real close, he's right here. There he goes up to the top. We put a puffer fish in there because it was it's just for giggles, haha. But it's the same kind of deal as, uh, as the auto harvester here. It auto collects and puts them into a chest, uh, which drops them into a hopper. And then puts them into the smelter. And at the same time, I utilized the auto smelting features of the one down by the zombie farm. You put your fuel in here, it goes into this hopper, it fuels the chest, and then all of your drops come down here. So, for instance, I can show you uh, if we were to fill this with what we're using for fuel, which is dried kelp blocks, it immediately ignites, uh, smelts this, drops it down here, so we'll have six here in a second. Like so, and that's just it, and away it goes. So the idea is that we don't have to be here constantly manning the furnaces. Um, I think lava is probably a better option for fuel, but, you know, it is what it is. Yes, meow, I know, we'll get to, we'll get to the kitties in just a moment. Uh, we're going to come over here really fast. So this was the uh, the way into the zombie for, uh, spawner that I first found, um, which we, was down here. There's a crevice, and I fell in. We have a, a quick way down here. Uh, and we're going to get to some of the stuff that's down there. This is the house that we built. Just a, just a quick little, this is, hey, we need to have a bedroom kind of deal, some storage. So we built a two-story house with uh, with storage into the basement. And we got a, lots of lightning storms and lots and lots of skeletal raiders. So I figured we should have some skeleton horses. So there's one up there, and we have, uh, what, four here. And two, so I have six skeletal horses in total. Which is super cool. Now, this area out here is just kind of our, our aesthetic-ish kind of area. We get some raised flower beds. And over here is the altar to Notch. Which Notch is the notchiest of the Minecraft EA gods. Uh, to keep us with good ISPs and no rain. And we make regular sacrifices to Notch. For instance, uh, here we go. We can, uh, we can have a quick sacrifice to Notch here. Dear Notch, please give us uh, good FPSs. Uh, for our, our recordings and our streams is and uh, please keep the rain away from us for three cocoa beans worth of time thank you very much lord notch and there you go ladies and gentle peeps and that should help us with the rain as long as notch isn't offended by the uh, the offering i'd say we're going to be all set uh this wall section here uh was actually really cool this is a uh this is a double piston extending ender girl Two of them. Guys, we might have to deal with this. Oh, here they come. Yeah? I thought you guys learned your lesson. No? Come on. What do you got? Oh, they're all coming at me. Everything. Bring everything you got. I ain't scared of you peeps. Come here. You want to go? You think you got what it takes? Come on. Get some of this hot action. Ugh. Oh my god. Three zombie skelly peoples. Oh my goodness. Here they come, guys. There's two more Endermen over here. Three. Four. Oh, the forces of Derp are after us. 
Geoff must be sending his scouts. Look, more over there. Peeps, uh, I actually don't think I'm well enough prepared for this. We gotta run. There's too many of them. We gotta fall back to the Citadel. Too many Ender peoples. Too many Endermen. This, this is too much of a fight for us right now. I am not prepared. All those Endermen. We gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go. Back to the tour. To the safety of the Citadel. Wow, guys. So many Endermen. That's scary. Okay, so this is a double piston extending gate that I, uh, I set up. It, uh, it works relatively simply. It's, uh, it sits on, on, uh, on gravel, and as it goes up... I'm sorry, as it goes up... The gravel falls back down, but the uh, the piston or the the fence posts here that make up the gate stay up, and then likewise when the pistons push them down, they're just down, and there they are. Uh, that is all intertwined inside here. I actually had to raise this section of the wall in order to give me enough room to be able to do what needed to be done. Okay, so we've done everything over here. We've done everything over here. We've gone out and seen the invasion of the Ender people. Oh, um, let's take a trip down. And here we are. This is our our mine car, car station area, uh, and this seems to be a lot of people's favorite part of this build is this mine cart station. Uh, I like this little river kind of deal flowing under underwater underground. Uh, it's just kind of aesthetically pleasing to look at, and I tried my best to light it in a way that couldn't be visible. I mean, I understand that there's a piece of glowstone right there, but uh, if you actually look, there's glowstone embedded in areas that you can't see, and I really like that. Um, so when you first land here, there's light here, but you, there's no torches. It's just that one piece of glowstone right there, and it's quite aesthetically pleasing to me. Over here, down in the minecart selector area, uh, we have our, our amethyst geode down this way, which is where we get all of our amethyst in order to make our tinted glass. And here it is. Wow, it's, uh, it's really grown up in here since I left it last. But this is our amethyst geode. Um, I'm not going to bother going in and harvesting that, but you guys get the idea. Sorry, I had to scritch my nose, which is going to interfere with the movements of everything. All right, let's go uh, take a quick trip on our mine cart. Let's go down to, let's see, that's the XP farm spider spawner. Slurpy slimes are over here, peeps. We, can, we didn't check out the slime spawner, which we will do in just a moment. The villagers and meat. We haven't gone to see the villagers yet. Let's go check out the villagers, peeps. The slurpy slime is up in here somewhere. I can't seem to locate him. So yeah, this is our minecart selector rail station. We have minecarts that take us to the major areas in the Citadel. Uh, I absolutely love this. It took a lot of effort to dig these tunnels and get them to go where I wanted them to go. Uh, we decorated them up with just some, some stripped oak logs and some oak fence posts. Uh, dude? What you just did there is not okay. It's not okay. Okay. So this is our villager trading area that we have set up. And for some reason I'm getting some weird lagging or framiness right now. Even after we've offered to notch. I hear something trying to shoot me. Do you guys hear that? Yeah, there's definitely shooting going on here. Definitely some shots. I don't know where it's coming from, but we're okay. Yeah, so this is our villager trading hall uh, area that we have set up. There's enough village. I gotta find out where that's coming. It's probably from upstairs. Uh, there's enough vill uh, enough villagers here that uh, that an iron golem has spawned, which is a bit of a problem because, as you can see, he gets in the way of my mine carts. Uh, so we have a simple wheat trade. Oh, in, in our first raid, you guys saw the second raid. Obviously, we didn't lose anything in the second raid. But in the first raid, I lost all my villagers, which was just two. Uh, ex and then I, this is the only one that I had left. And he was just, it's just simpler. I don't know what shoot me. There's a simple, it's just a wheat trade here for some emeralds. Uh, nothing crazy. This is our mending 
Trader, which is the only real book I was super uh, worried about getting. Here we have our rotten meat for emeralds. I gotta find out where that is. Uh, and of course, we got a Fletcher uh, for sticks for emeralds. And this guy, I hadn't figured out what I wanted him to be yet. But I think what I wanted is to try and get another paper trade, but I never got around to doing it. Um, let's go outside and see if we can find out what's going on with getting shot. I don't know, peeps. Someone's taking pot shots, and I don't know where they are. That's okay. Anyway. This is just a quick storage for us to, for our trades. Let's hop back in our minecart. Let's go check out the spider spawner. Just a, a quick trip down. Back to the minecart selector station, which I suppose we can have a... We'll have a quick look at that after we get to the spider spawner. And here we are at the uh, dual spider spawner, peeps. I was very excited when I found all these spawners. So there's actually um, uh, four spawners in close proximity. There's that one there. Uh, the two that we have turned into a spawner, this one here, and one actually in here. You have to be in the correct position to activate the two of them at the same time. But there's actually another one. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's back this way. Um or over there, there's another spawner, but there is no way to get them to be all active at one time in single player. So I could, if, if it was an SMP and we had active chunks loaded all the time, um, I might be able to set something up that activates these spawners consistently. But these are relatively simple spawners. The, um, the spiders spawn... And I didn't switch this out to tinted glass, but I was supposed to. I made the, the, the blocks to do it. The spiders spawn, they get funneled down in here. Uh, someday they're going to work their way over. I promise. There they come. Uh, cave spiders are a bit of a pain in the butt. Bit of a pain in the butt. So they come over and then they climb up here because they naturally want to climb. And they just get stuck right here. And it's, it's nothing serious. Um, it's just you get your sword out, you start swinging. You collect your XP, which isn't great. Uh, and all of the drops go into these chests. Uh, string, spider's eyes. And that sort of thing. So nothing crazy. All right, let's. Uh, this was a the longest tunnel uh, that I had to dig because this spider spawner is actually quite a quite a ways outside of the base. And I found it via an abandoned mine shaft, which I got lucky to find the abandoned mine shaft. I don't even remember what happened that I found it, uh, but I remember finding it, and we were just exploring and harvesting and gathering stuff. And this is this was actually really cool. I don't I can't get out, but. Um, this is a big ravine that I left mostly unlit because it was just super cool to build over and send the minecart through. And I like having the glass on the sides for us to be able to look out and see all of the dark, icky darkness that's down there for us. And we're almost back. And here we go. So this is the minecart spaghetti. Let's let's hop out and have a look at the minecart spaghetti. Uh, so each of these rails each goes to a different section. I've got them labeled here. This one's to the villagers. This one goes to our nether portal. Uh, the house and storage. The mine. XP farm, spider spawners. So let's go check out uh, real fast. We'll go have a look at the mine. Now, the mine is, is uh, actually a pretty quick trip. Yeah, so I should explain this really quick, too. Uh, this is the selector system. All it does is it enables a redstone post through a uh, an RS NOR latch, I believe is what it's called. Uh, so it activates a, a rail that sends you down, and then at the same time it sends a signal back up uh, to activate a redstone lamp to tell you which one of these rails is active. Um, this uh, And we should go over this uh, this quick minecart return station. So it sends you out all on one rail uh, from this side. And you go down. So let's see, where are we going? We're going right here. Um, and it sends us down there. But then when we come back, it sends us over here. We get wrapped around and we get sent over this way. And then as we pass through here, we hit two powered rails and an activator rail to eject us from here. And then what it does is it actually comes all the way down through here. And it comes all the way up and around to a minecart collector here. So it comes up, uh, it hits the cactus, which pops it off the rail. It enters into a hopper, and then it goes into our minecart dispenser. Which is uh, is kind of cool, the way the dispenser works. Uh yeah, that's not going to hurt anything. So the dispenser, the way it works is... Uh, let me pop this up here. Uh, this dispenser system 
it, it's just a series of hoppers they come down in. Uh, they go in to this particular uh, d dispenser. Uh, words, peeps, words. Just the words. And what happens is when you press the dispenser, your minecart gets sent. And then after a delay, so this would power this rail, send your minecart. And then after a delay, it brings another minecart to you. Which, in my opinion, is probably the best part. Uh, because you will never, ever have to have a minecart in your inventory, which I always carry a minecart in my inventory anyway, but there's always minecarts here for us to be able to get. All right, let's take a quick trip down to the mine. And this is the uh, the, the cowboy spiral shaft. We dug it on a stream one night, and the UD uh, named this the cowboy spiral shaft, peeps, because it just went down and down and down. It was just spiraling all the way down. And we're almost there, so it's just right here. This is our sh uh, this is our shaft, and it's the same kind of collection system. It's just much shorter here. Uh, this is our our branch mine for diamonds and, and whatnot. Uh, it goes for quite a bit. Uh, I did a video on this that we did in this uh, the uh, just Monday. Um, so yeah, it goes and goes and goes, and this is where I get most or some of my resources. Most of my resources have come uh, from filling up and working in the uh, the ravines there's just a massive 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 amount of resources in those ravines and that's where we got the majority of our diamonds and our lapis and redstone and sorts of things which we're not running super shy on it's just i would like to have a double chest full of everything and then i would be happy that i have enough resources in case there was something i wanted to to build or do uh, but that's just not that's not the way that this particular playthrough is working out so there we got sh we got shuttled off now, we're going to go to the nether portal. Actually, we should probably go to storage, and then instead of taking the minecart to uh, to the nether portal, we'll just we'll take a, a quick trip out of storage to, uh, to have a look at something very special. And again, this is not... It's not a, a super-duper long minecart ride, but it is... Yep, slurp, slurp over there. It is... Uh, a quicker, easier way for me to just get around. I enjoy the minecart part. Same deal. Uh, goes down, comes in there. Uh, I didn't know that was going to be a thing that happened. So, I used to have a button here that I activated. I didn't know that the minecart was going to activate it as it went across. But I set it up with a tripwire so that all I have to do is walk across it and I can come out. Our hidden stairs. I love this, this door. It's just a set of stairs. Uh, that retract and, and let us in there. Uh, here's our smelting area, our first smelting area. It's also where we do our food and our our all kinds of things. Uh, chickens, peeps. Uh, one of the one of the earlier episodes in the series was uh, I believed I called it. Things got a little out of hand, and it was all based on chickens. Uh, we are still eating all of that chicken, so we're uh, we're good to go on chicken for a bit. It is the night. Now, we come over this way and, and kind of over here tucked in the corner where no one can see. Um, there's a little button here. And the button is going to open this and take us into the orange pickle storage closet, which is where we go to discuss our orange pickles. Now, peeps, this is actually the room that we come to discuss the uh, the derp issue. So we saw all those Endermen earlier. That is the forces of derp currently being governed by Geoff, uh, set to we don't know what. Penelope initially came after us. Uh, we defeated Penelope's guardian, the dragon, and sent her running for the hills. But she seems to have been replaced by, by someone else named Geoff, and we don't know what the plan is there. But inside this room here, uh, I have just backup set of gear and things that we took to defeat the dragon and again more nether storage just so we can get in there so the whole idea behind this is uh enderman cannot see or hear anything that you're doing when you have a jack-o-lantern or a pumpkin on your head so if we make a room entirely out of them they can't see or hear anything that takes place inside this room so it allows us to strategize store things build up plans and have conversations that they can't monitor. But having said that, when we come out of here, we just carry on like we're talking about the orange pickles. So let's do that. And yeah, peeps, that's uh, so that's just where we store our orange pickles. And now you guys know. Um, last little bit. We're just going to take a trip over here and come out the front of the house. Down the front set of stairs. 
This uh, this gold block here, this represents spawn. Just so you know, that's our spawn location. And we're going to come down here into the nether portal. And we're going to have a look at uh, what we were going on in here for another hub. So, just give it a second, peeps. Ooh, eating all of my CPUs. Spawning in the world. All right, here we go. So this is our... Uh, wow, someone keeps leaving the door open. I don't know what's going on. This is our nether area that we uh, our portal brought us to. It's kind of meh. Kind of meh. There's a lot of screaming babies that come around and not a lot of glowstone, which I'd like to have a lot more glowstone. But uh, we made uh, we made do. Uh, it is what it is. We've we've got it. It secures our nether portal. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty safe. And I've got a couple of rail systems that go off in different directions. And I'll let you know where they uh, where they go here in just a second. So this one actually goes all the way that way, and then a long ways that way, over to our nether fortress where we've got our blaze spawner, uh, and we're harvesting some nether brick. Now this one. Uh, is a little more something something. Uh, this one's much more newer, much more recenter. And what this is is we when we went out to go combat derp, we ended up going to uh, the stronghold, of course. And when we got to the stronghold, the one of the first things I did was I set up a nether portal network back to the citadel so we could get back and forth with resources. So this is the uh, the rail system that takes us over to the stronghold to where we had to go fight the dragon. And that's what we're going to go do now, is we're going to go have a look uh, at how that's working out. Now, I've dropped these blocks hours ago. They're still there. They're coming with us. I'm taking them. So this takes us to the stronghold, which we can come check out. And there we are. And as you can see, I've been harvesting uh, some of this mossy and some of the cracked. Um... I like to have it. Uh, there's, there's some building I would like to do with it. There you can see we have some nether cheese. Uh, and this just comes straight down into our nether portal, which I have some plans to do some other things with. But let's go check this out. So over here, uh, this is where the new enchanting area is, as well as our new XP farm. Uh, this is a... a Enderman farm utilizing, an, I think they're called an Endermite, uh, and a, a drop system, hopper, and a, a hopper collection system for the uh, the eyes of Ender. Uh, this goes here, this goes here. So this is, a, this is a really, really fast, and actually we can probably shut that off, can't we? Yeah. Apparently we've been here recently. So this is, a, it's so loud. We'll shut this off. So this this system automatically takes the the ender balls and just throws them out over the edge because we just have so many of them. It's not even funny. But this is a, this is a great little farm. It takes us from level zero to level thirty three in sixty seconds, um, and it's really simple. You just come and beat up the endermen, and almost as quickly as you can get rid of them, more show up, and that's just how it works out. So. This is the remnants of the forces of derp that we beat under Penelope's command. And they are here for us to utilize, and that's just how that works, peeps. This is the new enchanting area I've got set up. Uh, again, it just makes more sense. This is where we get all of our XP. This is where we should have our enchantments. And the plan is to, uh, to come up with some sort of better system to get up and down from this leaf pathway. Um, I just haven't come up with it yet. I was thinking that a water elevator is most likely the thing to use because it's safe, it's easy. Um, but I just I haven't done it yet because when I built this, I died so much. And I got really, really tired of dying in the end. So I just I took a little break from building in the end. And that's just how that goes, peeps. I'm going to get to the top of this ladder someday, I promise you. And they're trying to talk to us. Someone in our stream told us that um, uh, the Ender Endermen are actually saying hello and how are you and things like that. Uh, there's an interesting bit of lore that they explained to me. I, I don't know. I don't understand any of it. Um, but it's something I'm supposed to have a look into before streaming, which is tomorrow night. Or tonight, peeps. Tonight. It's Wednesday's episode. Uh, you get to watch uh, the episode and then have a stream all in one day. So I will see you tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Right here. 
Uh, this is our portal out to the outer end aisles. We haven't done anything with it yet. I've just put it in a box so that it's a little more safe to go in and out of. Uh, I found that when I was throwing ender balls into there, it was sending me to all kinds of crazy places that weren't the best. And now, peeps, there's only one thing left to show you guys. I have to show you my wife, Arwen. And as we get everything spawned in here, there we go. Let me introduce you to my wife, Arwen. She's, uh, she's been known by many, many names. She's known as uh, my wife. She's known as Arwen. She's known as a donkey, a stubborn mule, but my favorite one, Peeps. My absolute favorite nickname for her. She's my... Ah, uh, you thought I was going to say it. Ah, 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 you know what she is. She's beautiful. She's my wife. I love her, guys. She's here supporting me all, all every step of the way. She has some great ideas that we utilize. If you've been in the chats and the live streams, uh, you've definitely had a conversation with Arwen. She strikes one up with everybody. She comments on every video. She's amazing, guys. Couldn't ask for a better or more supportive partner. Hello! Yeah, you too want to grow like that. But that's it. That's all I've got for you today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little base tour thing, uh, episode 49. And on Friday's episode, we have big plans. Oh, the big plans are going to be revealed, and, uh, and we're going to do some stuff. Uh, but that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Feel free to share this video around the internet as you see fit. Don't forget to tell everyone about my Arwen, my Arwen wife. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. GG's, everybody.